When it comes to expert ski terrain, you typically think of steep, bumpy slopes with maybe a few obstacles thrown in, but not at North America's most extreme resorts. If you find yourself at one of these perilous destinations, the toughest terrain will turn your idea of what a physical trail can be upside down, and at times will be so confounding, you'll wonder how some of them even earned trail designations in the first place. So of the hundreds of ski resorts that advertise expert and extreme terrain, which ones are truly the hardest? In this video, we'll share our picks for the top ski resorts for challenge in North America. We'll discuss what makes each of these mountains especially stand out in terms of difficulty, and since no resort is created equal, we'll make the case for why we put them in the order we did. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And for access to exclusive content you won't get on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all of which are linked in the description below. With that all being said, let's jump in. First up on this list, we have our pick for the toughest ski resort in the east, Mad River Glen. This skier-only Vermont resort doesn't have the largest footprint or highest vertical drop, but there's no better embodiment of the natural challenges the east coast has to offer. Mad River Glen already comes with the narrow, bumpy, and icy slopes that the East Coast is known for, but where the resort really stands out from the pack is in its sheer rawness. With very little grooming, almost no snowmaking, and a setup where pretty much any area, even off the march trails, is fair game for skiing, natural obstacles aren't out of the question in many places on the perennially thin cover East Coast, but with Mad River Glen, you should expect rocks, tree stumps, bare ground, and even frozen waterfalls. These obstacles may not look as flashy as the extremes out west, but they combine to create conditions that require perfect technical precision or mandatory drops to get out of. One could reasonably argue that other northeast mountains like Jay Peak or Whiteface can hold their own or even beat Mad River Glen in challenge, but Mad River really stands out in that you can run into its most trying obstacles off multiple terrain pods at pretty much any elevation. Ultimately, if you want to push yourself to the limit on dirt and ice, live in the northeast and don't want to get on a plane, and aren't a snowboarder, there's no better place than Mad River Glen. Next up, we have the toughest overall traditional ski resort in Colorado, Crested Butte. With over 60% of its trails rated as double black diamonds, this southern Colorado mountain already talks a big game on paper, but the resort's expert rated trails earn their designation, calling home to profoundly difficult extreme terrain including narrow chutes, mandatory cliff drops with significant descents and difficult landings, and perilously pitched mountain faces that will send you tumbling for hundreds of feet with one wrong move. Crested Butte doesn't see quite as much snowfall on average as the resorts further north in the state, meaning it takes longer for terrain to fill in, but this circumstance serves to make the resort's extremes even tougher when they do open, with exposed rocks, tree stumps, and thin cover all fair game on top of the other obstacles we already mentioned. In fact, Crested Butte hasn't even bothered to do tree clearing in years on its Rambo run, which has become notorious for being the steepest man-made run in North America, meaning you'll now be navigating small shrubs on that run in addition to the tantalizing 55 degree pitch that made the run famous. Ultimately, some of the other resorts on this list offer larger vertical drops and more jarring big mountain facades, but Crested Butte especially stands out for its rock riddled challenges, and guests can still find themselves in plenty of incredibly dire situations directly off the lifts. If you make it to Crested Butte and want to take advantage of the whole footprint, be sure to take your rock skis with you. Next up on this list we have Revelstoke, a resort that arguably radiates insanity at just a first glance. This western Canada mountain already boasts a mind-blowing 5,620 foot lift served vertical drop and a 6,030 foot height to vertical drop, which either way you cut it, is the longest vertical descent in all of North America. But across much of that footprint, which, mind you, is only served by six lifts, guests will find some of the gnarliest terrain around. Revelstoke especially stands out for its cliffs, and profound drops exist across all double black diamond rated trails, and in the case of the expert blades off the gondola, you may not be able to bail from these runs, and consequently, save yourself from hitting these obstacles for nearly 3,000 feet. In upper mountain bowls, cliffs still make plenty of appearances, but so do rock line shoots and daunting cornices. The hikes provide access to what are probably the toughest lines at the resort, but even directly off the lifts, you can run into extreme situations, including mandatory cliffs or straight lining with little to no notice. Revelstoke may not have the same flagrant pucker factor as some of the other resorts further up on this list, but there's no doubt that the unrelenting obstacles and draining vertical will keep even the most tenured guests occupied for their entire trip. 
If you plan to visit Revelstoke, be sure to do some cardio exercise beforehand. The last thing you want is to stumble upon one of its cliff drops after losing all your energy on the bumps. Next up, we move southwest to California's Tahoe region, where Kirkwood may look unassuming on paper, but packs an extraordinary punch. Kirkwood may only offer a 2,000 foot vertical drop, but the resort's rock-formed footprint makes for a series of treacherous chutes, cliffs, and coulars. Entrances to the hardest runs are marked with a skull and bone sign, and for good reason. Every upper mountain double black is crowned by a massive cornice, with drop-ins that can be best described as technical at a minimum, and in the most extreme cases, require either mandatory straight lining or even free falls. But Kirkwood's extremes aren't confined to the top of the resort, and guests can run into rock-riddled obstacles with little to no notice halfway down the mountain. And while top-to-bottom runs won't be the longest in the world, guests will face moguls, glades, and sections of formidable pitches on the way down. Kirkwood may not be our top choice for an endurance workout, but if you want to force yourself to achieve some of the highest speeds that are physically possible on skis or a snowboard, there are a few resorts that can match. Make sure you have an especially sturdy board or pair of skis when you visit. Regular rental equipment won't be able to handle the resort's straight lines. Whistler Blackcomb is the largest ski resort in North America, spanning over 8,000 acres and boasting a mile-long vertical drop. The resort has it all when it comes to ski trails, and that includes some of the most intense terrain on the planet. A double black trail sign at Whistler is not to be taken lightly, signifying truly treacherous terrain ahead. Rock line chutes and cornices prove extensive across upper mountain areas, with mandatory air and straight line situations making themselves present across various aspects and sometimes proving themselves required in tandem. The high alpine rock formations also make for some extraordinary cliffs, with drops of as much as 60 feet if you find yourself in the right place. The resort's below treeline terrain isn't quite as imposing as its bowls, but there are still plenty of significant cliff drops both directly off marked trails and hidden in the woods if you know where to look. Whistler Blackcomb doesn't have the longest endurance runs out there, and despite its tremendous vertical drop, the bottom half of the mountain doesn't feature much in the way of particularly technical terrain. Still, when it comes to the sheer quantity of extreme shoots and cliffs, this Western Canada destination is really tough to beat. Boasting one of the most iconic facades on this list, Palisades Tahoe has developed quite the reputation over the years for the ferocity of its expert terrain, and we're glad to report that the resort delivers, featuring lines that not only require the utmost in technical expertise, but present challenges that are impressively distinctive in nature. Across the resort's extensive footprint, guests can find tantalizingly narrow chutes, daunting cornices, and monumental cliff drops, even directly off the lifts. As one might expect, the toughest runs mandate what's basically perfect precision to execute, but what sets Palisades Tahoe apart from the pack is the diversity of challenges scattered across various resort zones, elevations, and terrain types. It's hard to think of any other ski resort that can boast features quite like the Fingers, a series of extremely narrow, progressively harder shoots that require a combination of jumping and straight lining to get down. The Palisades, a series of hike two shoots that start with some of the most daunting drop-ins anywhere in the world, an eagle's nest, which is literally just a sheer rock face that only opens when it's a really good season. And while these might be the most notable examples of Palisades Tahoe steeps, there are maybe twice as many lesser known extreme terrain zones you'll just have to explore the resort to find for yourself. And if things this crazy aren't up your alley, there are also plenty of traditional expert glades, mogul runs, and bowls. Palisades Tahoe does see freeze-thaw cycles and snow droughts at times, and during the worst weather spells, much of its expert terrain may not be open to the public. Additionally, this resort isn't the tallest in the world, so other mountains may be better for prolonged steeps. But if you get to this California resort when the snow is good, there are few other places you can push yourself to the same limit in terms of short spurts of terrain. If you've made it this far through the video, you can probably agree that there's no better way to have fun during the winter than going on a ski trip. But let's be honest, there are very few things that will make you want to pull your hair out more than planning that trip. Enter Peak Rankings Trips. We can plan your lodging, lift tickets, and even road trip itinerary. To get started, click the link in the description below. Now, back to the video. If you've heard of Utah Snowbird before, you probably know it for the extraordinary quality and quantity of its snowfall. But this unbeatable snow has one additional benefit. It fills in some hairy areas and allows the resort to offer unmistakably precarious terrain. Snowbird is home to some of the wildest shoots on the continent, with tight, demanding pitches often met with mandatory air and unclear landings. And the most intense lines aren't even that hard to get to, often being accessible directly off the lifts, 
and thanks to the resort's favorable snow, they tend to offer unusually reliable opening schedules for terrain of this caliber. If there's a double black diamond sign, even the most capable skiers and riders will want to think twice. Certain runs with this rating start out with pitches that deceivingly remind of traditional expert runs, but filter into the truly dangerous obstacles the resort is notorious for. Snowbird's extremes are most easily found off the east side of its iconic Cirque Zone, but there are substantial shoots and cliff drops across the entire resort if you know where to look. In addition, Snowbird's entire footprint is just plainly steep, creating endurance conditions that just add to the challenge. So don't let the welcoming snow deceive you. Snowbird is top-notch when it comes to terrain technicality, and it's one of the few places in North America where you might actually be able to take advantage of this strong suit as early as the December holiday period. Washington State's Mount Baker ski area may come across as pretty unassuming at first. The mountain has made headlines for monumental snowfall totals over the years, but when it comes to the terrain, it's just a modestly sized ski area with a 1,500-foot vertical drop. But within the resort's 650-acre boundaries exists some of the most profoundly intense ski terrain on the continent. When you get to Mount Baker, you'll discover that several skiable areas are marked off as extreme danger zones, a rather sensationalized designation even in the world of experts only and double black diamond markings. But visitors would best heed the resort's warnings, as the terrain in these areas can become painstakingly difficult. Some trails mandate legitimate freefalls, and others can require straight lines of as much as 100 feet. We're not even afraid to admit that several of these runs are too tough for our team, but if it weren't for careful scoping when we visited, we might have had to do them anyway, because all obstacles past the extreme danger zone entries are unmarked. If you don't see tracks in the direction you're thinking of going, steer clear. It's also worth calling out the rather comical method of entry to these zones. Rather than going through a traditional gate, you have to duck under a specified boundary rope, and while this may feel unintuitive, it's very much sanctioned by the mountain. Mount Baker is not a fancy destination resort, and you can't easily do a week-long trip there. In fact, the nearest practical lodging can be as far as 45 minutes away. But if adrenaline-pumping slopes are your thing, and you're willing to put in the effort to do a vacation there, Mount Baker won't let you down. It's also worth noting that Baker offers very easy access to nearby backcountry terrain, so if you bring your beacon and shovel, it might be worth pairing some extreme danger zone laps with a couple of excursions above the resort boundary. Next up on this list, we have one of the most notoriously difficult ski resorts out there, Wyoming's Jackson Hole. The resort sets a serious tone right from the start, with a consistently steep 4,000-foot vertical drop, allowing for full top-to-bottom runs exclusively through advanced and expert terrain. This level of sustained pitch is essentially unparalleled elsewhere in North America. Outside observers often think of Jackson Hole as overrated for challenge thanks to heavy hype surrounding the circumstance we just discussed, and that's forgivable if you don't know where to look. But the resort's toughest runs will truly have you on the edge of your metaphorical seat, with mandatory cliff drops, prolonged straight lining, and tons of natural obstacles. In fact, most of these extremes are directly accessible from the lifts, so if you so desire, you can get yourself into these dangerous situations over and over again. But Jackson Hole's real toughest trail is only accessible by riding the aerial tram. It's not Corbett's Coulard, which is famous for its jarringly steep entrance, rather, it's the SNS Coulard. This quintessence of a trail sits immediately to skiers right of Corbett's, and with a required 50-foot mandatory drop and mandatory simultaneous rightward turn in the air to avoid hitting a massive rock wall, it's not just the hardest run at Jackson Hole, but perhaps the craziest inbounds trail at any North American ski resort. You might ski a ride at Jackson Hole hundreds of times and never see a single person do it. So yeah, Jackson Hole already looks pretty tough on the surface, but after a closer look, it becomes clear that the resort hosts some terrain that's so extreme only a handful of individuals have ever been proficient enough at skiing or snowboarding to ever attempt them. In fact, we'd say Jackson Hole beats every other ski resort in North America for overall challenge, except one. If you're looking for an exceptionally challenging ski resort and you want terrain that's truly untamed, Kicking Horse is the ultimate destination. This beast of a mountain offers perhaps the most intense overall setup on the continent, with five peaks comprising a series of jarring ridges and minimal obstacle markings. Even Kicking Horse's single black runs are steep enough to make for no fall conditions, and if there's a double black marking, you can be sure to expect terrain with narrow chutes, some of which require straight lining in sections or intense cliffs. 
If you don't know what you're doing, you can easily find yourself overlooking unsendable cliffs and rock faces. In fact, we'd advise potential visitors to avoid even attempting kicking horses double blacks without a familiar guide showing you the way. But perhaps the most brutal part about kicking horses extremes is that the challenge doesn't end after you've cleared the chute, cliff, straight line, or any combination of the three. Like Jackson Hole, Kicking Horse boasts a commendable vertical drop of over 4,000 feet. But unlike Jackson Hole, most of these runs don't lead back to mid-mountain lifts, so you'll have to commit to almost the full top-to-bottom vertical descent before you can even take a break. So while Kicking Horse will ruffle your feathers with its technicality, it will also get your blood pumping from all the cardio you'll be doing. Kicking Horse's remote Western Canada location makes it a lot tougher to reach than many of the other resorts on this list, and its lack of lift redundancies can make it a really hard sell to the rest of the family. But if conquering every flavor of extreme terrain is the primary goal on your next ski vacation, there's no better resort than Kicking Horse. But is Kicking Horse really the toughest ski mountain in North America? Well, not everyone will consider it a resort, but if you do, Southern Colorado's Silverton Mountain takes things to a completely new level. Silverton is an experts only affair, with no easy or even traditional advanced ways down at all. Think of Kicking Horse's double blacks, but with no obstacle warnings at all and the potential for extreme features along the entire vertical descent as the minimum level of difficulty. So what's the catch? Well, for most of the year, Silverton is a guided only resort, meaning you can't just buy a regular lift ticket and freely ski or ride the mountain. The unguided season only starts in mid-March, meaning you really only have a few weeks to freely access the resort. Also, while not disqualifying in its own right, Silverton really doesn't have the creature comforts of a ski resort, with the only real piece of on-mountain infrastructure being the singular double lift. But while you'll probably have to pay for a guide to access Silverton, and you'll probably want to, given its lack of inbounds terrain markings, the one thing that's clear is that it's the gnarliest ski mountain in North America you can access by lift. So that's our rank order of the most extreme ski resorts you can hit in North America. When it comes to the highest tier of expert terrain, there's a surprising variety of formidable resorts out there, but the best mountains especially stand out for the quantity, accessibility, and distinctiveness of this type of terrain. We want to caveat that this was an extremely hard list to rank order, and most of these resorts are already so difficult that those of you watching may find them interchangeable. But if your goal is to conquer the slopes at every ski resort out there, the top resorts on this list are truly the ultimate challenges. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about this list? Would you change the order or add any more mountains? We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to leave us with a comment below if you have any thoughts. For more information on the extreme terrain and overall mountain experience at over 90 North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.